Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to take a look at uploading your website to a live web server out there on the web so everybody in the world can visit your website and admire your handiwork. How do we actually upload the site? Well, we got to go through a process, but Dreamweaver really helps us along. I'm using Dreamweaver CS3 here, and uh, it really is not too difficult to upload your site. So, one of the first things we need to do to set up a site here in Dreamweaver is define a local root folder or define the root folder of our site. Define a Dreamweaver site. How do we do that? Well, it's pretty easy. I've got an entire video actually devoted to how to do it, but I will quickly run over it just so you don't have to go and dig that video out. Come up here to Site, New Site, and I'm just going to stick with the Advanced tab for now. You give the site a name. It can be anything you want. This, this name never shows up on the web. It's just for your own personal use. It can be anything. It can be as horrible, as explicit as you want it to be, and you don't have to worry about anybody finding it and causing all kinds of trouble. Local root folder, that is simply the folder on your hard drive that is going to contain everything here that you see in your files panel. All the files you bring into your site to build your website with, they go into this folder. And then you can choose the default images folder. However, site name and local root folder are the only two things you need to make a site. You don't need anything else. Right here, I can just hit OK and create my site. However, one of the things we're going to be focusing on in a short while is the remote info section. This is where you choose how you connect to the web and enter all of your information. Notice though, we can just leave that set to none and we can hit OK and it creates a site. I don't want to do that though, I just want to cancel this because I already have a site defined for the Regent site here. You can see Regent site, that's that site name. We got our local view here. So let's say you've already created a site knowing that you don't need to set up your remote host yet. Let's say you don't have hosting, you haven't set up your hosting yet. That's fine, you can still go and start building your site, no problems. But now that you've built the site, you want to upload it. Well, come to your files panel. Right here we see local view. Choose remote view. And here, a little screen render error. There we go. To see the files on your web server, you must define a remote site. Define a remote site. Hey, that's a link. Let's try clicking that. Check it out. When we click it, this looks pretty familiar. Look at this local info. Remote info. This is that same site definition dialog box. So, with that in mind, let's begin. We're going to be using a process of connection or a process to upload called FTP um, or FTPing and FTP stands for file transfer protocol now you really probably don't need to know that but just figured I'd throw it in there why not the access obviously we're FTPing so we're going to use FTP access now FTP host all this information that we're going to be entering FTP host host directory login and password should all be provided by your hosting company or they should at least be able to let you know what yours is if they haven't provided it to you. Login and password they should definitely provide to you. FTP host typically will be your website URL but you know hey some things change and um, it may or may not be exactly what I type. I mean it's not probably not going to be exactly what I type because I've set up a free host for this uh, tutorial. So my FTP host is 741.com that's the FTP host. Yours might be www.mywebsite.com or http colon forward slash forward slash www.mysite.com. It could be any number of things. Host directory, this is usually something like http docs forward slash, but in this case I happen to know that it is simply forward slash. There's no additional folder that all of your files are being placed in underneath that uh, root hosting folder. But http docs is the probably the most common folder out there. So that's the one that if forward slash doesn't work, you might want to try that. If HTTP docs doesn't work, you might want to try forward slash. Alright, now my login I happen to know is tutvid.741.com and my password is quite long there. And notice when I put my login info in that the save checkbox becomes active. I can save this information. Now if you're using a computer that you only use, that you only get onto and there's no, you know, or you know, unless somebody breaks into your house and uses your computer, nobody else is really going to use the computer and possibly get onto your website and, you know, hack it um, or, you know, start moving files around and destroying files, things like that. You can save it. It's fine. It'll be a big time saver. Now if, you know, if other people are using your computer who might want to get onto your website or you have neighbors coming over or friends over or whatever, or maybe it's a notebook computer even that you're carrying around with you and you don't want to get it lost and have somebody open it up and say, hey, I can kind of mess up this guy's website. You can just uncheck save and basically all you will have to do is just punch in your login and password 
every time you want to connect to your server. Now it's just when you connect to your server, not every time you actually upload. So you should be fine there. For the rest of these checkboxes, I would just leave them all default unless otherwise specified by my hosting provider. In this case, I'm going to leave all these unchecked. I'm going to maintain synchronization of information. However, I am not going to check off automatically upload files to server on save. That is not default. Uh, it is not checked off by default, I should say. And thankfully, because what this does is every time you save your file, it uploads the file to the server, whether or not you've actually finished working on it or not. Because Dreamweaver doesn't know. It just knows you saved it. The reason I don't like doing this is because, well, let's say you've got a really popular website and you're working on your home page. Well, I, when I'm working on my site or anyone else's site for that matter, I save pretty frequently. I like to save every few minutes. And if I'm working on a half finished website, I mean, I don't want a half finished site being uploaded to my home page where everybody can see and be the witness of, you know, lots of shame and embarrassment of, you know, my site half built. So, you know, I do not keep that checked on. I don't think I've ever checked this on the entire time I've ever used Dreamweaver. So I don't recommend that you check it on, but you can do what you want there. Um, and now here we're just going to hit OK. And before we actually connect, I want to go back into there. So I am going to come up here to site and hit manage sites. And I'm going to go in to it using that way. When you hit manage sites, you're going to see a list of all of your sites, which I'm going to quick skip through so you guys can't see all the sites that I'm working on. And um, then you will see me in just a split second with the remote info dialog back up. Here we are. Remote info, one last thing that I forgot to mention before I hit OK a minute earlier was test. You got to test this before you go ahead and hit OK. I mean, if you hit OK, you can just come back into it just like you just did and test it. And basically, this is just going to check to make sure you can connect. And if you got all the info right, you're going to say, see, Adobe Dreamweaver CS3 connected your web server successfully. That is wonderful. That's exactly what we want. Hit OK. And then you would hit OK here again and go right back out to your site. So now that we're back out here, how do we actually connect to our remote server? We set it up. We didn't actually connect. If we look back to our remote view, to see your remote files, click the plug button on the toolbar. So I'm going to click that plug button, and you're going to see this background file activity thing pops up for about a second. And here is our actual server. Nothing's on it yet, though. So let's go back to local view. That's how you connect, you set up and connect to your server. How do we upload the files? Uploading files is cake work. It is an absolute breeze. Dreamweaver makes it so easy to upload files and move files around. I want to upload this index.html file and the images to go with it. Now, if you've never uploaded anything to the web before or never uploaded a full site, most of us have uploaded little files and things like that, but if you've never uploaded a site to the web, not only do you need to upload the HTML files, but you need to upload any files associated with them as far as the images that that file references, for instance, this image is not actually in the HTML file. The HTML file is simply linking to it. the source. We've got this big image here. It's just being linked by our HTML. If you have CSS documents that are styling your page, all that stuff has to be uploaded with the index or whatever HTML page you are uploading. So I'm going to select my images folder and my index.html. And we have two arrows here, a down arrow and an up arrow. Well, down arrow probably downloads, and the up arrow probably uploads. Well, not probably. I happen to know that the up arrow does upload, and the down arrow does download. So it's pretty intuitive and pretty easy to understand, and that's how you do it. You select those files, and I'm going to hit up to upload, and Dreamweaver's going to start telling me about file activity, and that's writing all the images and uploading all of them. There's quite a few of them in there, and the index.html file. Now, every once in a while, you're going to have a pop-up that says, would you like to put dependent files as well? Most of the time I choose no because it takes a whole lot longer because it's putting all the files that are dependent on that file up as well as that file. But until you really understand what's going on, you should probably just hit no and uh, just continue with your upload. And one thing that you also want to be sure that you do before upload is save right there. So that's it. You have just uploaded your files to your web server. Let me just come out here onto the web. Go to tuckbeard.741.com and check see what we've got. got. Some ads because it's free hosting. And then down here we've got our site. So there you go. That's live on the web. We've got our, uh, our links, which are not going to work, by the way. You can see file not found because there is no file there. Uh, image 1 does actually link to that image. 
and email me would open up my default email editor. So there we go. We have just uploaded the site to the web. Now, one thing I do want to point out, if you want to change your files, no problem. Let's delete that image and save this file, and let's upload this to the web. I'm going to select index.html, hit the up file, and here, dependent files. Put dependent files. I'm just going to say no. I'm connecting to the site, and it's just going to upload it. Bam, uploaded. Let's go forward to this site. Now you can see that that image is still there, but if I hit F5, which by the way is the hotkey to reload your browser, check it out. It's gone. So what's the lesson to be learned? Well, you can simply upload files over and over, well, by uploading, for instance, index.html, because it's already sitting here on our remote server, it simply overwrites it which is wonderful because you don't have to go in and delete all the files before uploading any updated files. You just upload them and they replace whatever needs to be replaced and you see the most up-to-date site that you possibly have. So that is how you use FTP, Dreamweaver, and the Dreamweaver tools there to upload your website. Have fun with it. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Please go check out my site. That's www.tutvid.com. Thank you for watching.